Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles Zen Photography. Today's tutorial is part two of my Star Trails tutorials. Part one was we went out to Brighton Park at night and we took a set of images of the night sky so that we could end up having a composite image of some star trails. If you haven't watched this video you can check it out here up here. Well worth the watch if you want to see how I went about capturing the images, the settings that I used, why I actually set myself up in this certain location. So check out the video and then you can watch this one here. If you've already know how to photograph star trails then this tutorial on how to edit star trails will actually help you. But it's just a set, part one and part two. So that night I took 54 images at 45 seconds and this is a JPEG image of what we did that night because in the video I stated that I shot in JPEG and in RAW. So this is just the result of 54 JPEG images blended in StarStack. Now we're going to open up Lightroom and edit the 54 RAW files, save them as TIFF files, then open up StarStack, blend the 54 files and then once the files have been blended We'll save the image as a TIFF file and then re-import it into Adobe Lightroom just for some final touch-up. So let's take a look at these images now. So here are our 54 images that we took on that night. Now when I edit star trails I normally choose an image in the middle of the set because if the light changed a little bit from the start to the finished then choosing an image in the middle gives me a very good baseline so we have 54 images so I'll choose image 27 and we'll go into the develop mode so this is number 27 in the 54 set and we'll start by selecting our color profile now there's quite a few color profiles that we can choose for landscape even astrophotos I like using the Adobe landscape profile if I was editing a wildlife photo I would choose Adobe color and if I click on the Adobe color you can see that it's a little bit more flat so this is why I choose the Adobe landscape profile but it's all a user preference it's how you like the colors to display I just like the Adobe landscape profile now this is has shot and on the night I stated that I chose a preset white balance because I was shooting in RAW and JPEG so I want the JPEG to look quite nice so I chose this one but it's a little bit blue so I'll bring it up a little bit to make it more realistic that's quite good I'll also decrease it, the tint a little bit because it's there's quite a bit of magenta in there that's quite nice I quite like that now as you can see the tree here is quite orangey it has this orangey glow that is because we're very close to the Houghton Highway and the lights from the bridge are reflecting onto this tree. We're only about 150, maybe 200 meters at the most from the highway. So at night, all the glare from the lights hits this tree. And this is why I chose this location because my subject, which is the mangrove tree here, would be very well lit up. I'll start by editing the blacks, whites, shadows, and highlights. So we hold the Alt key for the black, Alt key down, and I'll just bring up so that I've got a clean white image like that that looks quite nice the whites I'll just bring down a little bit the highlights I'll bring down a bit but I have to be careful not to bring them down too much because if I bring them down too much together when I blend the 54 images together what would happen is I would end up with a very light halo around the tree and I don't want that if I'm editing just a single photo I could bring the highlights all the way down to minus 100 and it would be all right but when you stack the images together you end up with a very small halo so I'm not going to take them all the way down now the reason that I'm reducing the highlights is if you look on the right side of the image here we've got quite a lot of light pollution here and on the left just a little bit but I'm just trying to mute that light pollution down a little bit so that's why I'm bringing the highlights down. I'm going to increase the shadows a little bit. What this is going to do is just bring out some of the detail in the tree. Now I'm going to increase the clarity quite a bit by about 26. The texture as well. 
I'll hold the Alt key here for the dehaze and as I bring it up I'm going to stop when I start seeing marks. Now I can just see right in the middle of the image here, although it's blaring white, I can see some yellow. So I know that I'm about at the extreme here. I don't want any more dehaze. Now if I slide more dehaze you can see, can you see it starts really sort of defining the blue but there's like a shadow around the tree. I don't want that so I'll bring it back down. Vibrance is already set to about 15. I'll bring the saturation up a little bit more. Now in the detail here I'll skip the hue and saturation and luminous. I'll come back to that but I'll do the detail first. This is selective sharpening and when we use selective sharpening on an image like this I don't really want to touch too much of the sky. I can touch the stars and the tree and all that. So you can see the masking is set to zero and if I hold the alt key down and touch the masking key you can see I've got a pure white image. This means that the sharpening that is stated here is getting applied to the whole image and I don't want that. So I hold the alt key and start sliding the masking slider towards the right. Can you see now how our image is going black? Everything that is black is not being applied sharpening. So the only sharpening is applied is in the white area. So we'll keep sliding up. That's it. That's what I want. And I'll increase the detail, the radius and the sharpening. This will give me very sharp lines and a nicely defined tree. We'll add just a little bit of noise reduction because our settings for that night, 50 seconds, f5.6, our focal length was 26 millimeters and the ISO was 1000. So I'm just going to increase the noise reduction just a little bit just to get rid of a bit of that digital noise. So I'm happy with that now. Now we'll go up to the hue, saturation and luminance and here I'm just going to strengthen the blues, just give the blues a little bit more depth. We could use each slider here one at a time but the best way of doing it is this little toggle here, we grab that toggle and you can see it now, I'm swinging it above the tree here. Anywhere I choose, if I push the toggle up, the slider up, I'm actually increasing the saturation. If I bring it down, I'm decreasing the saturation. And if you do this on saturation, you've also got to go to the luminance and do the same thing or else it just doesn't look realistic. So I want the blues to be a bit more bit stronger so I'll just increase a little bit and you can see that it's climbing up just slightly that looks nice you can see we've increased the blue saturation by plus 38 but also the purple by plus 7. I'm not going to touch over here because I don't want this area to be more saturated. What I do want in this area is to mute it so instead of positive I'm going to decrease it so I grab where it's orangey and now I slide it downwards and you can see that it's actually muted that color. So I'm happy you can see the magenta speed slid all the way down to minus 52. Now we go to the luminance side and to balance out the exposure if I increase the luminance I'm actually increasing the brightness of that color. If I'm decreasing the luminance I'm decreasing the, the strength of the color. So the color stays the same but it just looks duller or brighter. I'll show you what it means. I'm holding it down now. Now see if I'm decreasing it. See it's sort of like smoothing it out. It's just flattening the color. But if I'm increasing it like that. See it's actually brightened up the, the sky a bit. That's it. That's all I want. Now in this area here with the magenta and all that. I'm going to decrease it slightly. That looks much better. Now this area here where all the, of the light pollution, this is, this is the Reckliff area and all that. All this has been muted down a little bit because this is quite important when we actually go to stack our images. Now you can see that the mangrove tree here has got a very orangey feel because of these lights from the bridge. I want to try to reduce that orangey and bring it more to a, a greeny colour. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to grab the graduated filter. I'll go just above the tree and if you hold the shift key down, this is on a PC and just push up. It's going to keep the slider horizontal. Now 
I'm going to use a range mask. I'm not touching anything here for the moment. I'm going to use range mask and come to color. And I'm just going to use the eyedropper here and select the color in a square. That's it. You can just use the eyedropper just to drop, but I want to select a bigger area. That's why I drew that circle. Now I can use the temperature and change the color. Can you see that? Look at that. Look how the tree now actually looks like a real mangrove tree. It doesn't have that big orangey glow. And we haven't affected the glow on the branches and all that because I want some of that glow to stay there. I don't want it to be too grayy because if I just desaturated the whole tree back towards the green, all the branches and all that and the stump of the tree would actually look quite gray and I don't want that. I still want to have the tree to have an impact. So that looks quite good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the saturation. Now I can add some contrast into the tree, increase some shadows. That looks much better. To give you an idea of what we've done, if I just remove the mask, can you see it's very orange? Now when I apply it back, it's not much, but it just makes the image so much better. And sometimes you don't need to do that much editing to actually take your image from very good to great. I'm liking this image now much better. I'm just going to increase the exposure slightly. There, that looks much better. I'll add a bit of contrast to the image. But there's one thing here that I want to get rid of. If you look in the center of the image here, there's a little red light and it's a pain to me. This is actually just a navigational marker for the Pine River. So I'm going to come up here to the spot removal tool and I'll just select it. Just like that. There. That's it. Gone. All these other lights here, I'm just going to leave them there because they look all right. They look natural. This light here was just drawing your eye to it. So I find there's no harm in removing something that could be a distraction to our image. Now that looks quite good. Now I have to copy all the settings that I've done onto the rest of the other images. So I'm going to go to library mode. You can see the image is selected. I'll right click on it. I come down here to develop settings, click copy settings. And here I choose all the tick boxes where I've done some work. So the treatment and profile, white balance, basic tones. I haven't touched the tone curve, texture, clarity, dehaze, sharpening, the colors I've adjusted, local adjustments. All I've done is use the graduated filter. So I can unclick brush, unclick radial filter, noise reduction I've touched, lens correction I've touched, transformed I haven't touched at all, effects I have manipulated I've touched, spot removal. Remember we got rid of that little marker? I have to click it and I did adjust the cropping just that little bit so I make sure that that's touched as well. That's clicked on sorry as well. So we go copy. Now I just select all the images, right click on it, come back up to develop settings and click paste settings. And this just takes a few minutes because my computer is a little bit slow. Now all the 54 images have had the adjustments done. So again we just select all the images and we save the images as TIFF files. So on a PC, the shortcut key is Control shift e for export. The export panel comes up here and I want TIFF, Adobe RGB. I just want 8-bit profile. I don't want to resize the image. I don't want to sharpen the image. I don't want any watermark. And now I choose where I want the images saved to, which will be in the folder where I've got the images there. TIFF files, select folder, export. Once all the images are saved, we will open up StarStack. So this just takes a couple of minutes. So all our files have been exported from Lightroom has TIFF files. Now we're ready to open up StarStack. Now this StarStack program is a free program and I'll put a link in the description below where you can download the program from the developer. So we come up here to File, Open, 
Here are all our TIFF files, select them all, click open and in the blending mode what I do is I like using gap filling and there's quite a few different modes you can see there's light and gap fill for star trials I only ever use light and or gap fill gap fill works much better for star trials I find because it just helps close in the gaps because we took many photos together there was like a one second gap between each photo gap fill actually helps you close that gap up so we choose gap fill so all our photos have been selected all we do is press the icon here start processing and it just takes a couple of minutes this works very quickly as you can see here we can see we've actually got a plane that actually flew through the the scene while we were photographing this set of 54 images now if you wanted to you could find where these couple of images are and open these images up in Adobe Photoshop and just use the brush tool and just erase the plane but for this exercise I'm just leaving the plane in that's it 54 images processed that's it it's all done now we have to save the image and this is quite important when we save an image in StarStack, we have to add the extension. So all of these images are TIFF files, so we have to save them as TIFF files. If we just select, like I come up here to save, and I'm going to just call it the StarStack out, I'll take gap fill out. Now, if I just left it like this and click saved, it would save it as a JPEG image. So I have to add the extension of dot TIF and I want to select where it's going to go so it's going to go here in the YouTube tutorials editing star trials there this is where it's going I click save that's it our image is saved so we click OK now we go back into Adobe Lightroom we click import in the folder where it is that's it and we select import I'll just click back on all the set that's it it's sitting down the bottom here now we'll just go back and just do a minor touch up on it so we go back into the develop mode so you can see it looks very nice but it just looks a little bit flat and this is star stack it just tends to sort of dull the image down a little bit so we'll just add some clarity to it a bit of texture a little bit of dehaze just to make it pop again a bit of contrast that looks quite good let's see if we add a bit of vibrance to it that looks nice increase the saturation a bit that looks really nice so easy to do just that little bit now if I reduce the highlights a little bit now I can reduce the highlights a little bit more because the images have been blended together so we're working on just one image so I can try to dull down this light pollution here the image looks really good but it's just this little part here that just annoys me a bit so I'm just going to grab the brush tool and just brush over this area a little bit there and I'll see if I just reduce the saturation on it there that's about as much as I can go about that's still better than what it was before and that's it all we have to do now is just save our image You've seen how easy it is to actually edit a set of images because the old way of doing it in Lightroom was you used to have to select all the images but it is so much easier just to select one image do all your work on one image and then copy those settings across to the rest of the images this is especially important if you've got just a standard PC or a laptop that doesn't have a lot of RAM that's not very fast because if you're selecting the 54 images and you're trying to edit all of them at once it's really going to bog down your computer so it's best just to work on one image do all the editing on that image then copy those settings across to the rest of the images now if you found value in this video tutorial give me a thumbs up I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel stay safe enjoy your night photography and I'll see you next time.